1921 and 1922, the building of the church. In 1921, the pastor of Sacred Heart bought two acres of suitable real estate just two miles south of Sacred Heart on South Meridian Street for the consideration of $2,300. February 26, 1922, may be considered the birthday of St. Rock Parish, since on this day, a building committee was chosen to look after the construction of suitable quarters where divine services could be held. The meeting was held at 3 p.m. at St. Cecilia's Hall at Sacred Heart. The meeting was called to order by Father Odo. Mr. Edward Dietz was elected chairman. Elected as a building committee to decide upon building arrangements were William Spitznagel, Henry Herman, Frank J. Habig, Joe Suiting, Michael Volz, and Louis Niedenthal. They decided on a combination church and school building with a basement and first and second stories. For the present, only the big basement would be built, which would serve as a temporary place of worship. The new temporary church was to be a brick building. The basement was to be a spacious hall with the use of movable partitions, allowing it to be converted into an auditorium, dining room, church, and meeting room. On September 5th, 1922, Father Matthew Schmitz arrived to take charge of St. Rock Parish. Immediately between September 20th and December 4th, Father visited the families living within the boundaries of what would be the parish, which were Southern Avenue to the north, Madison Avenue on the east, the White River to the west, and the Johnson County line on the south. As a result of his visitation, about 40 families were found to form the nucleus of St. Rock's. Delay in shipment of materials somewhat held back the program of the building. Nevertheless, the united effort of the contractor, the architect, and the parishioners make it possible to complete the basement on December 20, 1922. The part of the basement to be used for the church was privately blessed by Father Matthew on the day before Christmas, the fourth Sunday of Advent. The Midnight Mass at Christmas was celebrated by Father Matthew with the approximate attendance of 380, of which 225 received Holy Communion. Parishioners formed a choir from among the young ladies of St. Rock's. High Mass was chanted, and after Mass, Holy God, we praise thy name, was sung by all. Since there was no organ, the choir was accompanied by two violins. Due to failing health and by the demand of his doctor, Father Matthew was replaced as pastor. He continued to act as the pastor until Father Peter Pfeiffer arrived on January 7, 1923. On January 21, 1923, the Altar Society was formed for all married or unmarried ladies over the age of 14. The Holy Name Society was also formed for all married and single men. The dedication of St. Rock Church was on March 18, 1923. The parishioners were hosts to hundreds of visitors who witnessed the solemn ceremony by the Right Reverend Joseph Chartrand. A solemn high mass was followed, followed the dedication services. The ladies of the parish served an excellent dinner in the basement and the celebration concluded with an afternoon and evening card party. All was not easy, though, in the new parish. A heavy rain always brought a flood in the basement. The parishioners came early to Mass with buckets, shovels, and mops to help clean up the water. Until the middle of 1923, the pastors made their way from Sacred Heart Church to St. Rock by foot. Father Symphorian relieved Father Peter of his long walk on foot by donating a bicycle. It did not take very long, however, for the parishioners, after seeing Father Peter's way of transportation, to hold a meeting and to purchase an up-to-date Model T Ford. Then, on March 16, 1924,
the young people decided they did not want to socialize with their parents, and so they formed the Young People's Club. Thus was laid the firm foundation upon which future parishioners were to build, and St. Rock Parish was well underway. During April of 1924, St. Rock Parish felt the need for a Catholic school. An architect was called upon to complete the additional two stories to St. Rock Church and therefore complete the school building. Two sisters of St. Joseph came to conduct St. Rock School. Sister Donatus, the principal, taught grades five through eight. Sister Della Rosa taught grades one through four. Since some of the children had never seen a sister, these two sisters went around from house to house to meet all of the children and to get more acquainted. Because we had no convent, the sisters lived at Sacred Heart Convent. St. Rock Catholic School opened Tuesday, September 8, 1924. The enrollment numbered 46 boys and girls. Since the stairway in the new building was not yet completed, the desks were set up in the schoolyard and classes were held there for the first two weeks. In 1927, the Sacred Heart Holy Name Society donated three acres of land south of the church and school building. The land was originally intended to be a new church and a Catholic hospital. And also in 1928, a third sister was added to the teaching staff. It became necessary at that time for the parish to consider a sister's convent. So, in the fall of 1928, a large frame house on the corner of Meridian and Sumner was purchased for $17,000. However, it was not until February of 1929 that the St. Rock sisters finally moved in and had a home of their own. In 1932, two additional classrooms were added on to the school, giving a total of four classrooms. At this time, a fourth sister also came to assist in teaching at the school. In 1933, Father Peter Pfeiffer, who had served St. Rock faithfully since January of 1923, his first full 10 years as a parish, was replaced by Father Arthur Pointowski, who arrived in June 1933. In the summer of 1936, the town of Edgewood was added to St. Rock Parish, even though it was east of Madison. Father Downey of St. Catherine Church requested this change because of the great distance these people had to travel in order to attend his church. This gave St. Rock more territory and more children in the school. Later, in 1936, Father Omer Brook arrived to take over as pastor. By 1941, St. Rock Parish had grown to such an extent that a third Mass on Sunday became necessary. A second Mass was also added at this time on weekdays. This was made possible by Father Eugene, the guardian at Sacred Heart, who acted as an assistant. In 1942, the parish had grown to 244 families, numbering 878 souls, with 225 children in the school. Each year, it increased. Therefore, the provincial saw fit to provide St. Rock with a full-time assistant in the person of Father Theodore Worm, who arrived on August 3, 1945. By December of 1945, there was a further increase to 284 families. This steady growth was soon to be accentuated by the post-war boom. Therefore, anticipating a tremendous growth, Archbishop Schulte established St. Mark Parish. That new parish was formed from the southern part of St. Rock Parish, with the boundary being the middle of Thompson Road. In 1948, St. Rock Parish had lost about 110 families to the new St. Mark Parish. Toward the end of 1945, Father Omer saw that he could liquidate the debt within the next year. Therefore, 
he determined to either build or buy a residence for the priests of St. Rock. In January 1946, all the school children made a novena to the Blessed Mother and to St. Rock to ask for God's blessing on this project. The result of this novena was surprising and encouraging. Mr. Edward Huck declared his willingness to sell his house and lot at 3511 South Union Street. During February, Father Omer paid back to the bank the sum of $750, the last of the heavy debt of $67,000 with which St. Rock Parish had been burdened for the past 22 years. This was the first time the parish had been out of debt. After 24 years of waiting, hoping, and praying, a residence for the priest was finally obtained. On March 5, 1946, the provincial made St. Rock residence an official house of the order. In April of 1946, St. Rock was fortunate in acquiring the acre of ground with a small three-room house adjoining the baseball field on the corner of Sumner and Pennsylvania. On this lot, the new church was later built. At the end of 1948, St. Rock Parish had grown to 268 families with 196 children attending St. Rock Catholic School. Still expanding, the parish reached 311 families by its 30th birthday and also had a daughter parish. Thursday, February 2, 1950, was a day unparalleled for great heroism and of gripping drama. At about 11.45 a.m., a faulty sanctuary lamp exploded, spraying burning wax on the altar, curtains, communion rail, and the pews. The force of the explosion was so great that the brass cover was driven against the ceiling. Our faithful sacristan, Irma Ferry, tried to extinguish the flaming linens, but the flames and the heat drove her away. She immediately sounded the alarm. The 200 children in school were led to safety in a matter of moments. The Boy Scouts of Troop 118 used fire extinguishers on the back of the altar, while the custodian, Leah Watness, tried to battle the flame, only to be driven back by its intense smoke. Lieutenant Vincent Martin of the Indianapolis Fire Department was off duty that day, and when he came to take his son home for lunch, and using his professional knowledge of firefighting, he crawled to the front of the church on his hands and knees. He pulled the clock plug and used an extinguisher on the fire. Sick from smoke, Lieutenant Martin took a second extinguisher, crawled back into the church, and sprayed the chemical strategically, thereby helping to keep the fire under control. Fire Department Number 26 arrived only six minutes after the alarm had been sounded. The fire was put out in a matter of minutes. No one was injured, thankfully. Lieutenant Martin's heroism and courage undoubtedly saved the Blessed Sacrament and our church. The damage to the church was only $9,000. It took only one phone call, and within an hour, 50 men and women appeared, armed with buckets, rags, and mops. Within an hour and a half, the debris had been cleared away. A holy mass of thanksgiving was offered the next day on the charred altar.
Gus Tony was a generous Catholic man who lived not far from St. Rock Catholic Church. He never married, but he spent his life making beautiful wedding jewelry and other beautiful items with gold and gemstones. He came from Yugoslavia, where he learned his craft. He would ride the city bus downtown on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays to purchase scrap gold from jewelers so he could melt it down and make new jewelry. He made jewelry for family and friends by hand. He molded the gold in sand using a process called sand casting. Gus Tony made this chalice with jewels and engravings during the 1940s and 50s. Mary's beautiful crown was also created by Gus Tony in the 1950s. Especially in the early years of St. Rock, parishioners gave their jewelry to the church to be made into the beautiful pieces that would be used during Mass. Also, over the years, St. Rock has been given many beautiful gifts from our parish families. Several chalices were donated to remain in the church after they were used for special family celebrations. The Stations of the Cross, as told by Father Wilmoth on April 1, 2020. When our church building was built in the 1950s, the Franciscan father, who was here at the time, was outfitting a new church building, and he knew that St. Peter's in downtown Chicago had an extra set of the Stations of the Cross. He asked the priest in Chicago, and he gave them to us to put in our new church here in Indianapolis. Then, in 1995, when we renovated our church, the stations were removed and deep cleaned for the first time. That's when we all realized that there was all that beautiful color on them and how truly beautiful they are. The artwork is very nice and they really are a truly beautiful gift from St. Peter's. Thank you, Father Wilmoth, for sharing this story with us and for re restoring this beautiful art during the renovation. In the early 1950s, after the new church building was finished, Father Omer wanted to build a grotto to honor our mother Mary. B. Burglar Massing's family grew up attending St. Rock in the 1940s and 50s. She and her siblings, Louis, Joe, Eddie, and Ida, went for day trips to southern Indiana with Father Omer to obtain rocks to build the grotto. B. Burglar Massing wrote, Rocks for the grotto were gotten in creek beds in southern Indiana. Father Omer would drive us there with the trailer attached to his car. We'd take lunch, fill the trailer, and head home, saying the rosary on the way. The burglar family was instrumental in making these rocks and a few boards into the beautiful grotto as it still stands in 2020.